Uh, call this meeting of the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors to order. Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Beter. Leland? Here. Little? Here. Velka? Here. White? Here. Schwartz? Here. Uh, join us in a moment of silence to reflect on today's actions. All right. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, next on the agenda was uh, recognition, or I'm sorry, you please have uh, the agenda so much. All right. All those in favor of the agenda? Uh, Any uh, The agenda is approved. Uh, next, we had recognition of the Don Bosco football team, but I don't believe they're here yet, so we'll jump to that if they do arrive. Uh, we'll move on to public claim or public comments. Uh, anybody wishing to speak to the board at this time, please come to the podium. Chris, before we go to the public yes. comments, um, if you'll allow me, I'd like to make a couple of comments. Yes. I'd like to start this year, I guess, on a better note than how we did last week. And um, after last week's meeting, I gave it a lot of thought over the weekend of um, what transpired and the comments made and, um, and even the comments regarding transparency. So um, in regard to that, I thought, you know, there's things that they're mandated, that we're mandated to do that we have no opportunity to change. And I said, yet there are lots of things that we do as a board that we can change. The rotation was certainly something that we could change, and, and that was something that we could have done any time um, throughout the year. Also, I, I'd like to add, I guess, to that, the fact that <clears throat> if Chris had been wrongly positioned in that, it is still something we could have talked about, and it would have been nice to maybe had some discussion on that before um, we were kind of surprised by it last week. So that, too, is a matter of transparency, and I don't mean to belabor that point, but just to saying there are things that we all probably need to do a better job of um, in working together. Um, seven years ago, I became a member of this board, and I knew it was going to be a, a learning curve for all of us. It was something, I think anytime there's a new member, there's an adjustment period, you know, there's a growing time uh, of learning how each uh, works together and what to expect of each other. I think this board had been an all-male board for many years, and so not only did you have a new member, but you had to get used to a woman member, and I know there'd been one maybe eight or ten years ago, but I had been, you guys had all, several of you had worked together for a long time. And so, like I said, there was that adjustment period, and I knew it would be difficult probably, but still thought we'd just all work through it. Every year, I've, 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 I thought it's been difficult for us. I think we'd all probably admit what, there's been some struggling <coughs> throughout it in us working together, and we need to do a better job at that. I've every year looked at it as in about this time of year in January, like I said, for seven years, saying that this year will be the year we work together more. We can accomplish so much more if we would. And every year I'm disappointed, but I'm hoping for 2020, this could be a year that we do that. Blackhawk County. I think we'd all agree would could be so much better if we would work together and that's working together as a board it's working together with our staff with the elected officials with other people in our community um, with other communities even and I I just like I say I think that's so important I know one of the things we've talked about here before is that we are a five-person board very different personalities um, we all have different ways of doing things we all have different ideas, different communication styles and management styles, but that diversity is supposed to make us a stronger board, and I would hope that makes us a stronger board. Um, all, it doesn't mean I'm going to agree with all of you or any of you. It doesn't mean you'll agree with me. It doesn't mean you'll like the way I do things or that I'll like the way you do things. Hopefully we could talk through those things if there were problems or issues with it, but what I'm getting to, I guess, is just that it's a, a matter of respect. And it's a respect for one another and working with each other. It's a respect for our staff and the people in the community and working with the residents. And I just, like I said, I didn't want to belabor it, but I just want to say I want us 
to this to be the year, the 2020 year to be the year that we all accomplish great things and we all improve our working relationship and get along better because I know we can do a better job if we all work together. So thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Linda. I appreciate that. And I, I share your sentiments and I, I really value the opportunity of working with each and every one of you up here and I actually consider you all a friend and just really value serving with all of your diverse opinions and backgrounds and I think that uh, we can make this year that we improve upon all of our strengths and skills and, and work better together. I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you, board. Thank you, Chris. I believe we do not have any public comments at this time. Uh, so we'll move on to claims and payments. Uh, claims and payments come out to 199918881 um, Really nothing to report. Uh, I mean, all the checks look normal. Source, social services uh, had 51,000. Medical examiner, 17,000. Maintenance, 35. Um, everything else was right on par. So, motion to approve. Second. All right, do we have any questions? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Leyland. Yes. Little. Yes. Roca. Yes. White. Yes. Work. Yes. Uh, next, we will receive project updates from department heads and elected officials. Good morning, board. Ryan morning. Brennan, assistant county engineer. Um, crews have been doing a lot of brush cutting, continuing as we've had uh, some good weather to do so and the lack of snow. So they're taking advantage of that and continuing <coughs> a lot of brush cutting throughout the county. Uh, construction does also continue on Cedar Wapsi Bridge over the Cedar River. They are doing some uh, work on the east abutment this week. So we expect that to again continue with the nice weather. So, Are our crews doing any yeah. construction or just? Uh, we are, no, we're not. They are, uh, our bridge crew is starting work in the shop, starting to um, precast some of the slabs for next year's work. At least we're saving fuel for no plowing for almost two months. <laughs> that does help. It can also change quickly. So that's just something we understand. That when each so. day is one day you never plow. Yep. yep. Thank, well, thank, thank you, you so much, Ryan. Thank you. Uh, anyone else today? All right. Uh, we, we will move on to the minutes approved from the January 2nd meeting. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is passed. All right, next we have the consent agenda. Uh, all items will be voted on by a single resolution. Second. Is there any discussion on any of these items? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. <coughs> Little? Yes. Jalka? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Uh, next we have a resolution with a tax certificate assignment for vacant lot parcel. 8913-26-178-022 located in Waterloo, Iowa pursuant to 446.31 of the Iowa Code be approved as said and said certificate of purchase of tax sale will be assigned to 1112 Randolph Incorporated as recommended by Rita Schmidt, County Treasurer. Morning board, Rita Schmidt, Treasurer. The Tremont Allen, he's the owner of 112 Randolph LLC. Uh, had requested an assignment of this. It is a small lot. There is a dilapidated garage on it. Uh, his intention is either to fix it up or put another uh, building up on that uh, area. Um, it's just around the corner from where his business is at and, and he would like to get it back uh, in a sound condition and um, uh, is willing to um, get it back on the tax rolls and keep taxes current. The taxes delinquent on it are $2,700. Uh, that does include special assessments along with real estate taxes. Uh, he's w wanting to compromise it because of the condition and the size of the lot uh, to $1,000 compromise and there's a $10 assignment fee from Blackhawk County to uh, 112 Randolph LLC. So um, at this point, this is a, a lot that's not going to be uh, something that the county would take uh, advantage of proceeding to tax sale deed so I would recommend that uh, uh, this be approved is when you say put a building up is the building going to be for his own purposes or is he going to sell it it's for his own purposes okay. uh, for his business and it's since it's so close to his business uh, he, he uh, is attracted to that 
uh, because there's just not a lot of areas that, that he can use. So it is a small lot. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Any other further discussion? Mm -hmm. Roll call, please, Mr. Beter. Trelka? Yes. White? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Schwartz? Yes. Next is a resolution that the compromise offered in the amount of $1,010 by 112 Randolph Incorporated on taxes owed for one vacant lot, parcel 8913-26178. Second. Located in Waterloo, be approved. Uh, any further discussion? Any questions? Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. White? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Roka? Yes. Work? Yes. Next, we have a motion to approve the estimated pricing for uh, the water bill flyers for the Washburn Sanitary Sewer Board, not to exceed $70. This is approximate. Um, the estimate we had was around $55, but that was based on a number that we don't know for sure. It was mm -hmm. roughly 200 and some households. So actually, it's, it's pretty inexpensive. And um, the company will be doing that. They'll uh, print it and stuff it and then send them out. I believe they'll probably go out the 1st of March or the end of February. So it, it'll be less than 70. I just want to make sure if it was a hair over the 54, 55, that we don't have to come back and redo it. Excellent. And we have had a couple of people apply. Even I think since we've the got meeting, so. mm -hmm. one that's on it, and I think we've had one that applied. I think two. So it'd be nice to fill the board and even have some alternates. Mm -hmm. yep. So Excellent. So moved. Second. Okay. All right, any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 I believe, and are you here with Don Bosco? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> okay. I will, we'll move back to our recognition of the Don Bosco uh, football team for winning another state championship this year. This is really exciting. We're really proud on behalf of all Blackhawk County. And is your team with you today? They're not. They okay. have been finals so far. All right, so good. Well, we hope that they're studying hard and that they're doing well today as great student athletes. And so we'd like to present you with this plaque from the Blackhawk County Board of Supervisors uh, on behalf of uh, your wonderful season. <laughs> if you'd like to go up to the podium and say a few words yeah. about the season, that'd be great. Um, uh, I speak for a lot of our kids. Um, they love living in Blackhawk County, obviously. It's a big deal to them. But uh, they, I know they wanted to be here. We tried to get them out, but uh, they just missed for a big wrestling tournament too, so they missed a couple days. But uh, They've had a lot of sustained success over the last 10 years, these gr this group of kids growing up in Blackhawk County, and there's a lot of avenues for them to do with the Sportsplex and a lot of things. We use that this year a lot in the playoffs. It was cold outside. It was nice to go inside and use some of the facilities around here. Um, growing up in this area is a real nice draw for us at Don Bosco, too, and it gives those kids a chance to get a Catholic education, too. So, uh, um, but. We appreciate all that Blackhawk County does for us, but our kids especially lo love living in this area. But uh, it's, there's a lot of stuff for these kids to do and a lot of avenues for them. But uh, for speaking for those kids, uh, a lot of hard work they put in over the last four years. The senior group won uh, three state championships and one quarterfinal parents. So that, that's stuff a lot of kids dream about doing. That doesn't happen very often for kids. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to speak for all of them, but I know, I mean, I had a great day. I enjoyed every one of them. I mean, whether they played football or they're my starters or non-starters, they meant something to me. So, but I know it means a lot to them just getting this award. So we, we appreciate that on behalf of Don Bosco. So we'll expect Thanks. to see you next year. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Next on the agenda is a resolution with policy revision to equal opportunity and affirmative action policy updating the definitions and action sections to more accurately reflect uh, practices be approved. So, yeah, yeah. That's all we're doing is updating some right. of the wording. Updating. Kind of a cleanup of the policy. It's kind of true on a lot of these. Is that we right. That's so, so we just looked at several policies right now because um, we're uh, assisting the public health department with accreditation, and they do need to submit policies that have been looked at within the last five years. So these next six policies were 2014. So they're all just minor revisions. 
So moved. Second. All right. Do we have any discussion? All right. Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Elka? Yes. White? Yes. Short? Yes. Next is resolu resolution of the policy revision to the employee performance evaluations policy clarifying when an employee would not be eligible for a step or merit so increase moved. to be approved. Second. Any questions or discussion? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Little? Yes. Jalka? Yes. White? Yes. Leyland? Yes. Short? Yes. Next is a resolution that the policy revision to the retirement policy clarifying that an early retiree can stay on the insurance until age 65 instead of staying Medicare eligible be approved. So moved. Second. Any questions or discussion? All right, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Jalka? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Little? Yes. Short? Yes. Next is a resolution that, policy, that the policy revision to work rule it's policy removing the phone number of, for company nurse be approved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please, Mr. Veter. White? Yes. Malin? Yes. Little? Yes. Velka? Yes. Short? Yes. Uh, resolution of the policy revision to the unpaid leave of absence policy clarifying that applicable leave banks need to be exhausted before unpaid leave is taken be approved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Leyland? Yes. Little? Yes. Elka? Yes. White? Yes. Short? Yes. Next is a resolution that the policy revision to employee assistance program policy updating the number of free visits allowed so uh, per year be approved. Any discussion? Resolution, please, Mr. Re or roll call, please, Mr. Veter. Little? Yes. Elka? Yes. White? Yes. Leland? Yes. Short? Yes. The next is a motion to, to direct the county auditor to advertise for a public hearing to be held at 9.07 a.m. on Tuesday, January 21st, 2019 in boardroom 201 of the Blackhawk County Courthouse, 316 East 5th Street, Waterloo, Iowa, on the proposed ordinance number 77-237 from a request submitted by Heartland uh, Co-op to rezone 5.61 uh, acres from A Agriculture to District to AL Agricultural Limited District to build four new 78-foot um, uh, grain bins. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 And the next is discussion of the results of the IT assessment. That's tabled till next week. That's uh, tabled. Okay. And we will move on to uh, item L: a discussion on the. Update of the 2021 budget. <clears throat> I don't. Uh, I don't have too much to speak on uh, as of yet. Uh, we are hoping to uh, get started heavy on the budget on the 14th, so we'll have uh, hopefully get a lot of the smaller departments uh, taken care of uh, on the 14th, uh, starting that Tuesday, and then pending. Uh, Depending on the schedule that everyone wants to kind of look into, we'll kind of go Tuesdays and Thursdays as needed. Um, just kind of, uh, you know, whenever you guys decide or what we need going forward and, and once we start kind of working through the budget. Uh, one thing that I did want to bring up is, uh, I know Kathy's not here today, but uh, Grundy Road is going to be one thing that uh, we'll need to um, at least have a conversation on uh, if we want to bond for it or not. Uh, that decision is up to you, but if we do decide to bond for it, we will need to do uh, some sort of, um, you know, pre-bond work uh, for the budget in FY21. Uh, for the solar project, if that, if that moves forward um, and gets approved, uh, we will get that uh, taken care of first part of FY21. So that will be a big capital uh, project that will be uh, taken, you know, um, uh, in FY21. So that, so we'll see that on there. Uh, valuations came in, uh, but um, every department's in. We'll just kind of move forward on the 14th. And if you guys have questions, I can answer them. But is Rory back there? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Rory's Thanks, back. Rory. Yeah. What's your uh, completion date? Uh, and I know the RFPs went out on the. Um, Solar. Well, did they go out? 
or did they or what's the target date on that actually starting um I'm, what I'm getting at, is it going to fall under this fiscal year or next year? No, I'm talking with James. Uh, what uh, what we're going to try to do, um, I'm going to give him the budgetary number, even though that project was already presented to the board and essentially approved, um, rather than doing an amendment during the FY20, um, we're going to specify it in the RFP with dates um, to uh, basically invoice that project in FY21 so I can bring that in front of the board at budget time. That way it's it's clearly identified in the FY21 budget. That money has been identified already, is that correct? I mean, we had to identify it to approve it. I mean, we can't approve it now. Yeah, we, it was identified to a certain extent. I think there are some discussions on where that money was going to come reserves. from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, I mean, the only thing is we just need to budget for it. So whether we do a budget amendment uh, in May for this or we do it, you know, first part of FY21. Well, frankly, we might as well just budget it for 21. Yeah, yeah. It we, we felt started. it would be cleaner just yeah. to go ahead and, and uh, put that into 21 rather than uh, putting it in as an amendment under FY20. And then that way, too, if there's, if there's lingering invoices that don't get paid in FY20 and that get paid in FY21, then we have to turn around and do a budget amendment right away in FY21 before we can actually, you know, pay those invoices. Will there be any invoices for 20? There, more than likely, no. no the way we'll draft... We'll all fall under 20. Yeah, the, the way we'll put the RFP together is we'll put together a timeline um, in order to achieve that FY21 date. Where are you at on the yeah. RFPs? Um, we have a, an RFP um, basically set to go. Uh, we need to have the committee, the uh, um, Renewable Energy Committee, look that over. Um, we'll probably shoot for sending that out uh, in... Uh, April May time frame and then that will set us up for the FY 21 um, physical year uh, for uh, installation and payment okay so that is going to be quite a ways out then yet yeah I think we thought it might be um, to, to put us in that FY 21 time frame um, if we go much earlier than that then that gets us into a situation where we could potentially fall under FY 20 and then you'd be looking at an amendment situation Oh, and we have the funds. I guess that is something yeah. the board might need to discuss or want to discuss because we did talk about getting that maybe started in the spring as far mm. as construction, didn't we? That was our that, that was our original plan. That's ideal. But again, for the budget, uh, just talking with James, felt it would be cleaner if we um, start that in the spring but do it at a time where the uh, invoices would fall under the FY21. I, I personally would have liked to see the project moving forward sooner. Um, since we've already identified the funding, I don't see why doing a budget amendment's a big deal. Yeah, the budget um, amendment's a way of doing it. Other so, than yeah. having a project that we thought was going to start possibly construction in the spring and now not talking about construction until 2021, I'm not okay with that. Okay. So you're going to end up with uh, two budget amendments because obviously you're not going to budget mm -hmm. for the whole $1.2 this year. And then you're going to have to either budget the rest in 21 if that's possible or amendment. Right. I mean, yeah. we can do it. Or anyway. any work that you do in FY20 will have to be um, accrued to this year. So you might have to do a budget amendment for this year if you start in the spring. Yeah, yeah that's what exactly. I said. We're going to have to do one this year for whatever. But Sue, so we don't know. You didn't even get the RFPs out. RFPs out. That's going to be, what, another six, seven weeks? Well, it'll be a public hearing situation. So yeah. there is a bit of a time. So we're a ways off from that. Yeah. Well, is the is the RFP close to being done? Yes. So okay, has Pete had a chance to review it yet? No, yes. Okay, you're talking about the committee and then Pete. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Rory. Thank you. So I guess that's something to discuss during the right. <laughs> All right. Um, how about the Tuesday Thursday? I know we talked about it. Mm -hmm. Tuesday Thursday is kind of what we've done before. Mm -hmm. It certainly could be changed. Let's. Yeah, Does that I mean, it's, seem like it works for everybody? let's just get in the budget and determine where we're at yeah, because yep. there's a lot of times the budget finance director will say, well, I, oh. I won't have anything ready for Thursday. So let's, I think we should always discuss it at our Tuesday's meeting and then go from there. But I just mean kind of to pencil in our calendars right. and kind of what we want to do if it's Tuesday, Thursday. It helps James as well as scheduling because pretty soon he'll have to get a schedule for us. Yeah, and then I, I mean, kind of, I mean, to your point, if, if you wanted to, pencil it in and if I need more time then we don't have to meet on a Thursday. I mean whatever you guys want. So I'm gonna start at nine on Tuesdays and Thursdays and tentatively. 
and then no, after right, the right after the meeting. Yeah. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. after the board meeting on Tuesday, but nine on Thursday. Again, that's and then yeah, good work. Yeah, whatever you would like. That way, if we got meetings on those days, we can cancel them too yeah. for the yeah. words we set out. Yeah. yeah, some people. Yeah, some do. We got a meeting at ten. Right. So, okay. Otherwise. Yeah. All I have. Anything unusual you saw in the comparisons of last year's budget and this year? Anything we need to be aware of or nothing that's nothing about. that's going to jump out and surprise you. Um, you know, uh, cap there's small increase in capital, but again, that's going to be brought to you. Um, there's nothing large increase in capital. Everything seems to be warranted. Um, for instance, if you know vehicles, um, you know the cost of vehicles are going up, so then you know there might need to. Um, look at that small increase, but by no means is there a huge capital increase. I'd like so. us to take a hard look at um, not moving forward with what we were talking about. I wasn't in favor of last year, but I'm just one vote with uh, the outside agencies. Mm -hmm. I believe that's a big mistake for us to get involved with. That's why they've got their boards set up. That's what boards are set, set in place for is to help the, the different places raise money and the monies we got in our reserves should, should be used for stuff that we need done here in the community or in our in our buildings and stuff we got a lot of projects that need to be looked at there's a lot of things we could be doing moving forward with i know we talked about it a little bit james as far as the where there were more applications obviously we did the application process there wasn't a large number but it was more have you had an opportunity to even look and see what that total was I, have, I don't have it in front of me. It is. It is quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, it, it is. It's, it's quite a bit. Yeah, there's about like eleven, I think, that applied. Or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I was so. on one of the agencies. I said on and I told them that I wasn't in favor of it. I said that's what our job is as board members to raise that money. Yeah. No, and I can. I have that when we first talk, but typically the agencies kind of get brought up a little later in the budget time, just so we. Yeah. We can address the whole budget first. I think you almost expect the commercial tax from the state. You're going to be seeing some movement on that this year, and you're going to be paying this year. I know. Quickly. That's a given in my book. Whether it's a third, like they said, three payments, or if they knock it all off at once, it's going to affect us. Even though we did budget for it last year, I understand. Yep, so we budgeted for it. You're going to budget for it this year, a third of it. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is if we it doesn't look like that's going to go anywhere at least in fy21 mm -hmm. um however it's, yeah it's they surprised us before exactly so <laughs> why do you say that you don't think they're going to act on that in this legislature really they, election year they don't seem to they don't seem to i don't know I, I think they will but we'll see they'll bring it up I so i kind of split the differences is my thought mentality is if we increase that budget line item uh, on the revenue side Roughly about two hundred thousand. It's gonna obviously help help with the levy rate. Um, what did we increase it last year? Do you remember? We, we actually decreased it to six hundred thousand. So we so probably planned for a year, like a, we, we to budget, have a complete. We budgeted for seventy five percent of it, so that we reduced. Yeah. We prepared, so in theory, building up a reserve pool, yeah. and that when it is gone, that we've got this cushion to work with. Yeah. I'd be idea. surprised if they don't do anything in this year. We won't know until later, but, right. but again, we—I mean, we only—we budgeted, you know, we we re, we received, you know, a little over three hundred thousand more in revenue this year than last year. So even if we're off a little bit in this year, I mean, I I understand that we're we'll still it's just it, it can all even out. If and we'll have obviously, like you mentioned, have to vote probably on to see if people we want to continue that or do yes. any of that. Obviously, when we get to that budget time, um, and I don't know, but that, because of the 11, I thought if we were to want to interview, are we going to interview mm -hmm. all 11 or is there going to be some type of a selection? You're talking about interview as far as coming yeah. to the board meeting, yeah, yeah, yeah were they all? But I think that should be the last thing that we do so we no, know where the heck we're sitting at with a budget mm -hmm. because there are some new rules this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you get two public hearings, and you also got a two percent increase that mm -hmm. um, you're going to deal with plus um, vote. Is it if I, it's if it's over two percent, we need to have a supermajority. Super, yeah, so mm -hmm. that's a whole new ball game. There, those are the dates we're going to need yeah. for later when you give us our schedule too. To make well, sure. yeah. So tentatively, I mean, I'm I'm hoping to get uh, the first public hearing on March 3rd, and then the second finalizing the budget on March 17th. 
so the deadline this year, the 25th for the last one. 31st. 31st. So, I yeah, I agree probably. I can see us doing it at the end, mm -hmm. obviously, if we want more discussion. But I just thought at that point, then we need to determine. I know some of them will be calling us because they right. will know where we're at by then anyway. Yeah, I would, I would think you know, wait till the end of the budget process like we usually do. But mm -hmm. I would just assume give them all the opportunity to come and make their case and then mm -hmm. and see how it balances with all the other needs of the county and what, we what we're able to do. Yeah. But. Okay. I just I didn't know if we wanted a group to look at a smaller number or depending on how much money I guess we'd want to do if we decide to have it. Yeah. Anything else from uh, I, and I was going to ask this and I don't know like I said maybe somebody else has thought of it too. Last weekend we got the email um, from County Attorney Ryan Williams mm -hmm. about um, consideration of security in this building, some additional security. I'm sure that probably wasn't built into anybody's budget, any of the department's budget. And I didn't know if that was something that James, I, I don't know if Brian would want to address that at all, but I was going to say if that's something like you could work with, with Tony and see if that is something we want to consider. Yeah. Oh, but, well, thank you. Uh, Brian Williams, Blackhawk County Attorney, and I did as indicated, uh, sent uh, the board an email last Friday. Um, uh, this is something that's been percolating for some time. I mean, we have issues almost on a weekly basis, uh, but it got real on Friday. Um, and I, I kind of consider myself to be here on behalf of, you know, not just county employees, but state employees. Uh, we're all in the courtroom together. We're all there by virtue of our position and our jobs. Um, there's no doubt that on Friday, one of my employees would have been beaten severely, uh, but for um, the Black Hawk County deputies that were present. Uh, the concern that I have is they were present only based on a hunch. Uh, they, were, they were present because I called. The judge had indicated he didn't want them there, but based on some, some concerns that I had earlier in the day, in the week, and some previous uh, interactions, I decided that I would call for them, you know, kind of striking that balance of not wanting to step on the judge's toes, and, and you know, it's his courtroom. Uh, but I, I had them there anyway, and, and thank goodness they were there. Uh, but that's how we operate, and that's that's been a concern here. That uh, and it's not just criminal cases; um, it's across this courthouse. It's um, it's throughout here. So I, I I have had the discussions informally uh, with Sheriff Thompson. Uh, he's certainly in favor of increased security, uh, but it, it is a conversation that we have to have. Um, uh, that what we're doing right now is not enough. We need more. Uh, I think we need to be more in line with. You know, when I go try a case in Dubuque for a special prosecutor, you know, it's just a different ball game when I walk into that courthouse. Um, when I go to Scott County for other reasons, it's a different ball game. Um, thankfully, we haven't had too much happen here. That had Friday played out like the individual had intended, we would be having a completely different conversation here today. But I, I don't necessarily think it's a Board of Supervisors' concern. At the, I mean, it's a concern, but. It deals with the judges because the judges dictate whether they want one in there or not. So the board's not going to tell the judge. And at the same token, what he's talking about security is uh, Sheriff Thompson's deputies. Mm -hmm. So as I indicated in that email, I think it's a discussion you need to have with the sheriff and the judges and figure out because that's where your problem is right now. They tell you they don't want anybody in there. The board's not going to do it. Can't tell them to do that. So yes and no. I, I don't know that I agree with that in its entirety. I, uh, particularly if there's a, a, a recognizable safety issue, then no. a deputy's not going to leave if a judge says to leave. If there's a recognizable yeah, be a deputy there. Yeah, I understand that. But, but um, the sheriff is the one that's paying yeah. for the security too. So right. that's where the uh, discussion needs yeah. to be. And um, if the board can be of assistance, we certainly will. But I. When you got judges up there that say they don't want them and in there, that, that's but that's not that's not the question. That's not the issue here. The, the, that's very few and far between. Uh, and, and to say that the judges don't want them in there is different from a judge saying, "I don't know that we need them in there." That's the, what we the see. The question more often. is, you want deputies up there, and the person that controls those deputies is the individual sitting behind you, the sheriff, yeah. not the board. No, but I think that the board still controls the sheriff's budget yes if, yeah. I, if i remember well we do and so but it's coming out of more security. that 60 40 security budgets where the money's coming from so again we spend money out of there we need we check with the sheriff before we do it okay. so anyway that's my take on it no and i, and I do take and i do thank the board um a supervisor little got a hold of me immediately i do thank uh, thank you for that uh a number of other you reached out but it was uh, it's a real concern and the liability that would come with this uh, and, and not to mention the loss of employees 
Uh, this doesn't happen twice to an employee. I can assure you that. If, mm -hmm. if it happens twice, they're gone. Right. Uh, I wouldn't be here if it happened to me twice. So um, I just want to, you know, at least have this conversation. Um, this is going to continue to happen, um, and I think I think more, more needs to be done. Is it something I mean, I think, you think a work session would be important for, or just discuss? And I think that's a conversation for Sheriff budget? Thompson and his captains. Um, they're the, they're the experts in this field, not me. Gotcha. Um, yeah. But, uh, That's what I mean, though, what the work session is. But, but I, anecdotally, I can tell you what happens in the courtroom. I'm a habitual attendance in the courtroom. I can tell you. I can't tell you how to stop it, but I can tell you what happens there. And I'm telling you on Friday, you haven't seen anything like that before. Yeah, and, okay. I can't, and I can't tell you how to stop it either. I'm like you. It's professionals like Sheriff Thompson yep. and his uh, staff. No, but I can tell you what happens there, and it, it's not uncommon. Yeah. So it is maybe something, though, we need to at least consider having more discussion on right. and budget time being appropriate, whether or not we decide to do it or not. So. Tony, you had something you wanted to... Oh, I didn't see him there. Th sorry. <laughs> I'm more than willing to do a work session. I think that's a great idea. Um, let me give you just a little bit of history. Eight years ago, you had two courthouse security staff. The purpose of our courthouse security or courtroom security is to provide security for those incarcerated inmates attending court in the courthouse. Um, so their role is not for people outside of custody. Um, that's never what we've done. Um, this particular incident was somebody that was outside of custody. Um, so eight years ago, that staff was two. Um, we now have six. As you recall, last budget, we increased that staff to make it a total of six. I've, I've increased that now based on changes that we've made uh, policy-wise, changes on uh, staffing, changes on uh, how we did savings for FTEs, uh, based on um, how we staff our jail, based on the schedule that we provide um, within the jail. And now we're doing uh, six courthouse security staff members, however, we are still only providing that same service. So we're barely keeping our nose above water providing the exact same service that we're providing with two just eight years ago. Um, so the same discussion that we had last year when I said, listen, I still need more bodies to do the exact same service that I was providing eight years ago with only two bodies, um, that's where we're at. So the ability to increase um, services for non-incarcerated coverage um, strictly comes down to more bodies. Um, that is something I'm willing to have a discussion on. Um, What's the response time, Sheriff? If if something happens, it depends on where your deputies are. Or, well, um, I mean, this so, situation last week. I mean, it could have been there, even if it was seconds. There still was going to be some problems. You know, uh, in courtroom 301, that in that he wasn't an inmate. That that person had about a 25 yard head start. Yeah. And my deputy still got him before he got to uh, the assistant county attorney uh, from outside of the courtroom. So um, the response time on average is two to five minutes um, from the courthouse yeah. or from the from the jail to the courthouse. That's a lot of time too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, however, uh, with those six bodies. Um, when they are not actively engaged in escorting somebody from the jail to the courtrooms, when they're not actively engaged, this is called the utility squad. And their utility services are extraditions, transports, and courthouse security. When those three roles aren't being provided, they're also rovers, they're also uh, escorting inmate work crews, they're doing all kinds of other utility jobs. Um, that's now since been curtailed to just courthouse security. So you're going to see those more uh, around the courthouse, but again, uh, likely not a huge impact because they're still only providing subsistence at uh, providing security for those that are in custody. <clears throat> Never before have we held more forcible felons than we're currently holding in the courthouse in the Blackhawk County Jail. So that staffing level has increased commensurate to and in response to what we're currently holding. Um, and while all of our uh, call volume and, and our arrest rates have, have decreased, the severity of the crimes that are being committed are, have increased. So the types of crimes that are being tried upstairs are much more violent, are much more serious. 
So the reality that we face each and every day, the reality that my staff faces each and every day, is much more trying and much more serious. So the ability for us to deploy that staff, um, if what I heard Tom say was you want to entertain that 60-40 room and board, um, I think that work session is a very entertaining work session to have conversation about. And that was just a suggestion. I don't know. You know, it's got to come from somewhere. Yep. And is there enough in there just to say in the the sustainability is the big issue with regard to the Albright decision and sure. the gross decision and, yeah. and some of that. The sustainability of that is, is concerning to me. But you're probably looking at what for one deputy benefit? A little over $100,000 $100, per body. Yeah. So, yeah, about $110,000 per body. So Certainly uh, warrants discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. But yeah. And I know you mentioned, like you say, the inmates and the seriousness of the crimes and that type of thing, too. But we've had some volatile situations, I think, too, because of family members or the way that That's what this was. Of course, and that's what, yeah. yeah so yeah. That's been going on for years, though. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. not a new thing. No. Nope. But, yeah, no. I just know the people that come in the court <laughs> Yeah. And some of the people that we, like say, take um, weapons and things from coming into the court. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, I definitely appreciate Brian making us all aware of the situation. I think he brings a a legitimate safety concern for our people that we need to that we we all want to to have a work session on and figure this out yeah. this ain't the first time we've been down this road before yeah this is the first time you've seen this i mean this is the first time you've seen this what i'm talking about as far as the security outside inside okay yeah. thank you all right do we have any more discussions related to the budget All right, moving on to any reports or information from the board. I do have a couple of comments or a couple of things I just wanted to ask about. I know um, we had a conservation uh, appointee and a health department or a board appointee, both of those that um, had openings and were supposed to be filled, I think, by December 31. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if anybody's interested in interviewing. I, I'd send an email out saying I was interested in interviewing or certainly was willing to interview, but I think we need to get those probably filled. I'd be happy to join you on those interviews unless, yeah. unless there's anybody else that wants to. So. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. All right, we can Thank work you. together to get all that scheduled. And the other point was just a, um, an FYI for everyone. Um, I think everyone here was um, participated in the December 17th meeting of the CCC, that oversight board. And there were several questions from many of us that were here, as well as all the mayors that were present. Um, several of those mayors have asked for a work session. They thought there were some questions that maybe they would just like to have answered um, a little bit more thoroughly and an understanding mm -hmm. of that. And so they had asked for a, a work session with the, the sheriff and Judy and, and some of that staff. And unfortunately, I think from a scheduling point, they needed to have it soon. Mm -hmm. And so it was something they'd like to have Thursday um, if that works for at three o'clock and I did check with the sheriff yesterday just because you, I know you were out I was going to mm -hmm. talk to you about it yesterday, but um, so I talked to Tony and it sounded like three o'clock would work unless his schedules changed So if that works for you to call that meeting right. and get us all mm -hmm. together and those of us that want to attend fine. Are you talking who what mayor? Yeah. Several mayors. I, said, I haven't. I said what no. Mayors? I said there were several mayors at that meeting that said they would like to. Um, they were talking at that meeting mayor, about that. Well, they, no. I meant they had the concerns and the questions that we all talked about. But afterwards, they expressed an interest of having. So you want to reconvene the oversight board? Is what you're saying? Well, a work session just to get those questions answered. I don't want to. I said that everybody wanted their questions answered. I had questions as well. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they didn't ask them that night when everybody was here. Well, I think part of the, uh, one of the issues probably was that we'd like, and I talked to this um, with Tony as well, that many of us had to vote on information that day that we hadn't had in our possession before about the IT position or about the, mm -hmm. you know, the management salaries. And, and it might have been nice to just have had more discussion about it before we had to vote on it. And so I thought, you know, rather than have to revisit everything, but to go back and have those questions addressed was a good you way know, to approach it. Tony, on the... Um, uh, conference board with assessor we have two but with the oversight we've only had one or if we right. need to go back and do that 
pre were uh, authorizing the publishing yeah. and then have the second one and and then in that case there the questions could be asked prior I think you're absolutely right the that, budget. That's Linda and I had that conversation too mm -hmm. just because we've never had two meetings before doesn't mean we shouldn't yeah, yeah. Um, we've always followed this rubric and and this time there was significant differences in how we approached this budget um, and it shouldn't have been a surprise. You were sitting in a lot of those meetings where I looked at every chief and said, take this back to your mayors. Make yeah. sure they are aware. Um, and but I mentioned to Tony that we didn't all have that information. And so, did, but but, uh, did. so when, uh, when we had that conversation, maybe that's what this work session is, is to say, listen, there, there's, there's a new rubric that we can follow. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a way to improve both the communication in lieu of the chiefs if they don't carry it back to their mayors we can still sit down and we can lay this out for you give you a week to digest it before we put it out for a vote so that you can come back having fully digested it bring questions back whatever um, and uh, and make sure so I, I think there is an opportunity for a work session I don't want to undo the work that's been done obviously no, but certainly either. to to say Mia Copa we can we can do better and and we can make sure that uh, they come future, from one or two mayors or I think so there's I, four. I think I've got an idea no there was four and um, I'm happy to say who the four were did we get a packet prior to that meeting we did but it didn't include the information on the IT position or the management salaries it was really just the operating budget I know in the past um, Judy's not only had the budget but she you get like a three pager the, yeah, yeah uh, she did that. each item and you should get that I mean that that should have been what went out I did that is what we got um, but again the clarity that comes with that only comes as far as you read into it or as as well as you digest it um, yeah. I attend a lot of board meetings where I don't really spend the time probably I should digesting the information that's put out ahead of time so yeah I think um, the key in the future is to yeah if, if we have a work session before we have the, the vote it, there's absolutely no sense uh, in 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 springing a budget on you and then forcing you to vote the same day that that's tough and and I thought about that not just this yeah. year but in years previous too yeah. um, uh, we started having conversations about changing the rubric on how we break down uh, you know uh, how how that uh, how the payments are made and 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 how those percentages are, are factored and and this was the first year that we introduced that as well so there was certainly conversation that should have and could have been had on why we decided to go the way we went uh, with regard to that as well so so I think a, a work session to kind of explain here's the long-range planning that this board is going through um, and uh, that we are following Waterloo's design that we are implementing you know uh, George Wessel's uh, merging of the two uh, concepts and you know integrating those kinds of things and we we have what three new mayors yes um, so bringing them up to speed that well, like, none of that hurts what's, what's ironic you know you indicate there's three or four but we, mayors weren't here we were missing mayors there were two we mayors didn't even have a quorum until we missed. called one and tracked one down well, so two, yeah two there you go right there but one was out of the state and one was working but so, uh, I, i'm certainly happy to so if you, is that to, still to, work, to, to, to work for a work session on thursday on thursday yeah. i think that uh police chiefs have a duty to get it back to their mayors i agree <laughs> I, yeah. I had three months where i looked them dead in the eye for right. three months straight yeah, it's been talked about but like i said they don't even come to the meeting and we had to track one down just to have a quorum for them so well, I guess I you know the IT assessment was a opportune time for this position to be brought up I guess there wasn't more information about this uh, so that I feel there was a lack of communication between dispatch and Kim but did they do the assessment IT team. assessment we, did do yours over there we did have that conversation and and the county is not interested in picking that up no it's separate it is separate but I don't even know if they did the assessment they did not there. nope they did yeah, not. They it would have been a, on this. but that conversation was so it because it would have been a good opportunity for us to get more information in right. the IT assessment and do you provide think, that information to the mayors I do think most of this discussion would probably be good for the work session yeah. so it's absolutely uh, published yeah. and everybody knows we're gonna be discussing all this stuff yeah. um, I but know, I'm but certainly, two that weren't certainly there, happy. So they would be for sure. So yeah. Plan to be no, if, if some of our colleagues in the cities have questions, we want to have good working relationships with them. So, um, happy to have a work session Thursday afternoon. I'll work with Dana to get that published. Thank you. This Thursday, I got an appointment already. Was this Thursday? This Thursday, yeah. 
Tony had a meeting at four, but three did work, so we tried to just squeeze it in there, and that was what worked for the mayors, not us. Yeah. Well, they got to work with us too. No, they said that too. What worked yeah. for us too, but I said there was Let some. Let me see that they're here anyway. Yeah. Oh, you'll be surprised. When they needed to be here was the night of adopting the budget. Well, the 17th when we did that, I said one was working and one was out of state. So, so you know that happened. We also have an obligation to get back with us and let us know, courtesy letting us know they're not going to be here. That's what most board members are do. And there's too many boards anymore that people don't have the cur well. There's no courtesy anymore. Let's just put it like that. Well, I was a chair and I didn't know any of them were gone, so that information didn't get that. Well, it didn't get as far. That's that they were that they, they were gone. All right. Well, we took it. The attendance. And we had to track right. one down and get Either a phone way. call to yeah. have a quorum, otherwise you wouldn't even have a meeting that well, night. Well, that might have worked better. <laughs> <laughs> well, do we have any other reports or information from the board at this time? Yes, I just, uh, uh, that policy that I'm working with others on, I'll uh, go to the department head meeting tomorrow with the amendment, talk to them about it. I've got some uh, good feedback from the security guards that are working. Uh, I think generally it was probably just an oversight, uh, uh, but we're getting more information and that's going to the policy review committee. Just, I mean, it's a slight adjustment in security concerns. Mm -hmm. On that one that you sent? Yes. On the weapons? Yes, with retired officers, yes. Because it squarely put me in that boat. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here unarmed. So would a work and, session yeah, be um, helpful on that? As it, well? may be. Oh, okay. it may be. It may be. I don't, but yeah, I don't know. I've talked to Brian. I don't know if policy is going to meet on that, to be honest with you. Um, Brian, you want to talk a little bit about sure. Supreme Justice, well, or Chief Justice uh, Katie's. Right. I, and I think, you know, uh, Certainly, they can they, they can meet, but it may, it may just be academic. There were two supervisory orders done in 2017. One was in June, basically barring guns from courthouses, with the exception of law enforcement officers. There was then one done in December that said, okay, maybe an oversight. Some courthouses are different. The board has the option of making an application to the chief judge about those areas that are not wholly controlled by the state court system. And I think they left it broad for a reason. So here at the courthouse, we're left with the basement and the second floor. Um, and so how you get to these locations without, you know, entering the, the main floor is is at least something to, to consider that even with a board action, uh, short of making that application uh, to the chief judge, it may, again, just be academic at that point. This is another thing I find ironic. The state mandates us to provide all these facilities, yeah. all these services, and they want to control our operations. It's always and it's frustrating. It's always been that way. Yeah, and no money for it. Right, yeah. right. Well, the newspaper sure. just had where they're going to have uh, tax cuts up there at the legislators, and you know what's going to happen then. Yeah. It'll come right down here to your level. All right, do we have any more reports or information from the board for Pete, you got something? Oh, man, I don't have anything. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All those in favor?